top TV executives and creatives are in Cannes for the annual program sales market, MIP TV. One Australian media CEO is being honoured with a prestigious award. For more details, Media Week's James Manning's here. James, um, Tim Warner being honoured. Yeah, look, Tim's been a long time um, visited to the uh, MIP TV looking for content for Seven. In his role these days, he doesn't really have to go anymore. People under there go, but they, you know, they honour people every year with a sort of Medal of Honour, they call it over there. They give out about four a year to different people and uh, picked an Australian. Tim got it this year. Uh, Wednesday night it was given to him at the Carlton Hotel, a gala dinner. Uh, sitting in the audience with some of his colleagues, uh, Brad Lyons and Angus Ross, who work the conference floor looking for things to buy. But uh, Tim was there just to get the medal this year. Oh, and also, um, while we're on the subject of TV, hearing of more online commissions for video content, something we were just asking Ian about. Yeah, look, Yahoo's getting into it now. We've heard about Amazon uh, buying it, Netflix. Now Yahoo looks like they're going to get into the space and start uh, commissioning original content for uh, for screening on their platform. Um, just as some other news as well, Triple M Melbourne getting an award as well. Yeah, look great at the um, most innovative international radio station at a, uh, at a uh, radio. Uh, conference and awards session in Los Angeles for things like the Hot Breakfast Show doing very well. And it's just a great turnaround story at Triple M. They're doing good things digitally and the way they treat their sport, the AFL in Melbourne, and it's worked around the network on NRL in um, Brisbane and Sydney. While you're on the subject of sport, there's been a lot of talk about this um, and, and sort of seems to be gathering pace. Former Nine Managing Director Jeff Brown reportedly up for the, an AFL Commission job. Yeah, look, I've been mean, talking about it for a while. It backed off a little bit when they appointed uh, Kim Williams to the Commission, but um, they think Look, Jeff's got some great smarts. Not only has he got his media, he used to he worked for the AFL in in legal for a long time, so he knows both sides of the fence. Probably coming in towards the end of uh, 2015 when there could be another vacancy, and um, it'll be really the pointy end of the latest TV rights negotiations. Just about then, we're halfway through the current rights deal, so they'll be close to getting there. And Jeff would be great to sitting on that uh, that commission alongside Kim. Okay, all right. Time for a look at the TV ratings, and this is for week 14. Correct. We're up to yep. now, um, and. Of course, the block uh, Sunday, Channel Nine, top ten for week fourteen. Yep, absolutely. The block and my kitchen reels nearly full. The whole top ten. We'll um, see it next week too. You've got to think the block's probably going to be number one. If something after amazing will have to happen to push it out of that for the final, which went to air Wednesday this week. And resurrection just dropping back after being. Uh, yeah, look, still doing really big figures, yeah. but um, yeah, it's. Seven of you are very happy with that. And looking at the subscription TV, top five sport programs there. Yeah, all footy, NRL and AFL. And the non-sport programs for week 14. Yeah, movie uh, down the bottom there, Star Trek Into Darkness on the Premier Channel. A couple of uh, Disney movie channel launching this week too. Uh, let's also just focus on some other news as well. I mean, Game of Thrones, uh, we were talking about that a little earlier. Uh, obviously, a huge amount of interest in this season for that. I mean, how big were the numbers? Yeah, look, about 300,000 people sampled the show on the uh, Monday evening. That was uh, They screened it virtually simultaneous with the US mid-afternoon. Did about 100,000, which isn't bad, mid-afternoon for a uh, subscription TV channel. About 150,000 for the screening later that night. Then the Plus Two channels all added up to just over 300,000. They'll pick up some more viewers across the reef. So you've got to think there'll be four or five hundred thousand will sample the show after the that first episode after the week's out. Foxtel locked up all that content so you really can't get it anywhere else until the series is over. Lots of talk about the impact of uh, piracy. So yeah, look, did big business because you can't get it elsewhere. But um, you know, that's just part of the times, you know. But I think Foxtel did well over. They said their subscriptions have been up a little bit too. And yeah, so as you said, coming out and sort of answering the, the criticism about the exclusive deal. Yeah, look, well I think it's fair enough too. Look, you, you buy the rice to one of these shows, you should be able to lock it up for a, for a certain amount of time. Okay. Um, just on to some other news as well, and that was the, the big ratings for the block finale. We saw some of the figures there for week 14. Uh, how, how big were, were yeah, they? Yeah, look, just over 2 million people. It was pretty big. It outrated the uh, block at the same time this year, uh, this year last year. Uh, did really well. Didn't do as well as Block Sky High finished, but comparable figures during the season, it, it did really well for them. But the uh, big thing was the prize money, you know, over $2 million shared amongst four people. And we think that's a world record prize win for, for a single uh, television episode, so amazing figures. Yeah, not bad. Um, My Kitchen Rules, of course, uh, the main rival to The Block, it, it's going to continue, obviously, yeah, look, at the that final three. Yeah, looks like it's going to tell you much about the scheduling, but you've got to think, look, there's still four or five contestants left. Uh, 
ratings end this weekend before the Easter break, so they'll come back and really give it a, a, a big push for the final couple of episodes uh, after Easter. Then we'll get into new programming like um, House Rules, Seven's renovation show, uh, their answer to the block, which ended up doing pretty well last year. Um, just some new shows as well. Sky's Stan Grant has a new crime show. Yeah, Crimes That Shook Australia. I actually spoke to the English producers. Uh, it's a spin-off of an English series called Crimes That Shook Britain. It does good business for them over here, so they've produced an Australian version, got Stan Grant to host it, and uh, be interesting to see how it goes. Crime and Investigation starting Wednesday nights. And uh, Fox Sports, it's got the Ryder Cup for three yeah, years. Ryder Cup for the next three years exclusively, so they're calling themselves the home of golf now, which is probably what they can get away with that, given the wealth of programming they've got there, covering the Masters, of course, um, tomorrow morning if you want to get up early. Um, you can watch that, but it's all, they've got to share that with Seven, mate, though. The Ryder's Cup they've got exclusively. Phew. Plenty going on. There is. <laughs> Thanks so much for that, James, as Thanks, always. Brody. James Manning there, editor and publisher of Media Week. That's all we've got time for on the program this week from the team here. Thanks for your company.